uh, the objects that we have built. I will show a few images later. Um, but going back to this image, um, and also um, uh, looking at, I'm not looking at the comments, but there were a couple of comments. <laughs> and these comments were, were quite interesting, so I don't want to get into these comments. Um, but if someone wants to discuss them with me, I think please come and, and, and talk to me later. Um, but um, I think one comment, and thanks to Sayani, I think that, that I, I would like to take out of this discussion, I didn't participate in it, um, was to kind of celebrate diversity. And I think that that's kind of something that I, that I, that I really would like to push. I'm trying to push that here in LaSalle. It works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but to work with people from different disciplines, I think that can be quite refreshing. It can be very frustrating. Um, but uh, I think it's just a, a different, you just get different points of views, how people from different disciplines work, look at things and, and kind of interpret them. Okay, so that's the starting point for my for my talk now, and uh, I would like to go back like two years, 2014, when when basically whatever is in this little box here, that's the thing, that's the thing. Uh, it didn't burn the house down; <laughs> right, it's still working. And it started 2014 when we were asked to do a light installation for an opening at our second campus, Winstead, which is down at uh, Newton, and we were asked to. We, that's always students and, and colleagues of mine, uh, to do a light installation because we have a big green patch there and for the opening we proposed light installation to be set up there. So it all started with these little cubes, small scale model, an Arduino, a TSC um, LED driver and, and some LED modules. And, and, and this is kind of what came out of it then after like two or you know, two, two, three months of work. Um, an installation work made out of Maranti wood boxes, one by one by one boxes. There are 81 of those. They're all custom built, hand built uh, by Dia and his students. And then <coughs> they are equipped with uh, these LED tubes that you buy in Simlim. A very nice lady, a level two <laughs> e scan. Um, in this little box here in the, in, in the center. So that was the control unit of it. What is inside? Well, there's an Arduino inside. Uh, for us, I think it's just the easiest way to, to work and prototype and, and develop uh, these projects. A TLC, a 16-channel uh, LED driver, uh, some MOSFETs, uh, a lot of wires, and uh, then these LEDs. During the opening, I think a lot of people kind of misunderstood the idea of the who works so they <laughs> came up and, and of course you said to take a lot of selfies and, and uh, climb these boxes <coughs> which was a little bit scary to us but it worked um, and I think that's also a, a very inspiring moment when, when the audience kind of takes over your work so it's not like okay there's a painting on the wall don't touch it but when the audience kind of approaches your work and kind of reinterprets the purpose of it but it kind of makes makes it what its own little space sorry what have you intended it was a light installation. The lights, they um, oscillate uh, in different phases, in different modes. And uh, there's a, I don't have a video of it, unfortunately, but I have videos later. Some, sometimes it kind of pulses, so it's kind of in resting mode. Sometimes it starts to flicker. Um, and, and it just wants to be there and, and participate and uh, entertain people. Of course, it has also had to be big because the whole patch is so big. Um, so a lot of work in the end went into building these boxes. We also have massive rain and it kind of sustained that rain. So um, um, we can make it waterproof. And eventually I, th I thought it was a, was it a good experience? Yes, definitely. Was it a good outcome? I would have made some things differently. <coughs> Those are mostly uh, aesthetical decisions that I would uh, refine. But in the end, it worked out really well. The collaboration worked out really, really well. Students learned something and, and uh, uh, um, everyone was happy at the end of the event. So moving on from there, um, that's the circuit. Um, the circuit wasn't, wasn't packed into a box and then kind of stored in, 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 a, in a shelf. Um, I invited 
other people kind of to come and collaborate with me. In this case, it was Bunny Haika, who is a local musician, a multimedia artist, so he does a lot of things, uh, poet, <coughs> to do an um, Art Science Late event at the Art Science Museum. And again, I brought this little box here, down here. <coughs> we set up this whole installation, or this, it's again, a duration installation performance. We set it up uh, for the, well, we came into the room all empty. We set up all the boxes within these three hours. We did our performance, <laughs> we packed everything, uh, and after three hours, the room was empty again. <coughs> Modularity and um, I think for, for me a very important element of my work because I don't permanently install my work. I bring my work to different places. You will see more spaces and places later. So modularity, packing things, putting them together very quickly is, is kind of very important to me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Moving on to the next project. So I'm doing a lot of projects here. Um, a research project with um, a colleague of mine, uh, Brian O'Reilly. He's a musician. And um, I was talking to Sayani earlier. Um, so we, we proposed this research project, which is about interconnecting musical and artistic interfaces, uh, MIDI uh, software that uses OC, uh, software that uses WebSocket and uh, Arduinos, of mm -hmm. course, using serial communication, <coughs> um, to bring them all together and talk to each other. So we de developed or we developed a prototype for a networking solution that allows us to do that. And uh, suitcase again uh, pops up over there. And that's Tommy here on the left uh, showing off his uh, super collider patch that would uh, drive um, the LED boxes here uh, on the screen. So super collider generating some tones sending it over, I think in this case, this machine, uh, serial communication to our suitcase, and then uh, lighting up the lights. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Come in now. She's for take that last. Yeah, there's still a lot of empty seats. <laughs> <laughs> Just leave, leave it open, otherwise people will not or something. Like that. And then uh, another version. So from the light installation, now this object kind of also starts to speak, in this case, this uh, tone generator language. Um, it um, could also change the mood, so more aggressive. And this then uh, resulted amongst other objects and other interfaces, other musical instruments, uh, again in a, in a performance piece that we uh, showed here uh, in the performance space downstairs. So our work, I think, is always very hands-on. It always needs to work. So if it doesn't work, the audience will be very upset. Uh, we will be upset as well. So I think making things work is really important to us, so it can't fail. And maybe just a run run through uh, through that installation. So there's a lot of software pieces, screen-based works, analog synthesizers, again the lights and the box, and so on. So again, we, we develop everything here uh, from scratch, all in-house productions. Of course, we make a lot of use uh, of uh, open source uh, software, open source hardware. <coughs> so moving on, so now the lights can <coughs> make light, they can speak, make sound. Um, the next step for us then was to integrate them into um, performances, in this case, um, 
a theater play, an improvised theater play with <coughs> acting students here from uh, Lazar, where the props kind of became the architecture of the space. The next project, uh, the following year, uh, the lights then were used in uh, collaboration with uh, dancers, dance students, <coughs> who again have a completely different view of, of what this is, um, wh how to interact with it, how to work with it, what does it mean when the light is blinking very fast, what does it mean when it, when, when it pulses, how do I respond to it, so how do I interact with this, this thing. Just a few images. The next project then, uh, I brought into the gallery downstairs, so um, the idea of that exhibition was to set up that structure again with these light fixtures within a time frame of two weeks, invite students to come up with that particular structure, work with me, I introduce them to the electronics parts. Again, it was, was kind of this playful activity of getting students involved in bringing technology into an artistic environment. That was earlier this year, 2016, in the gallery downstairs. And then just recently, uh, the exhibition, the duration of performance at the uh, National Museum. I don't have the footage yet, so I think the only thing I have is here the tower, which was equipped with these light fixtures. That's the resting mode of the tower, so while we were not there and performing, it would just like rest and parts a little bit, blink a little bit to catch attraction. Yeah, mo most of the lights are basically based on, on this little thing, which is here in the, in the seat case. I mean, it, it doesn't look very pretty to an engineer, I guess, but uh, I think this is how we work best. That's what we... <laughs> that's, that, that, that's the easiest method for us to make things work. We tried perf boards and so on, soldering everything. There's a little mistake in there. Yeah, we are screwed, have to do it everything from scratch. So uh, that's something we don't really like <laughs> because we're always working at the edge of time. Um, but, but nevertheless, um, you know, now having an engineer come in here and finding this really, really oh my goodness, you can't do this. Uh, <laughs> I think that would, that's, that's great, but even greater would be than to take up the challenge and come up here and, and say, look, I'm going to build you a PCB board. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I make that better for you um, to be part of that process, to be part of, uh, yeah, what I just said in the, in the beginning, to work across disciplines, to get a little picture of what we do, to get a little picture of what you guys do. And, and really, if someone is up for making this work as a PCB design board, please yeah, contact me and come up to me. But having shown all these images, two years, uh, endless, not endless, but uh, maybe eight, ten performances, this thing has worked quite well. We haven't burned down anything. So it works. It works for us. It does what it's supposed to do, and that, that's important. And yeah, that, that actually is more important to us. I think for an engineer, again, and I think that that question, I was very, very surprised this pop, didn't pop up in that discussion. What does this box actually do? And, oh no, not this box, what, what, what does it do, right? There was, there was no question, what does it do? Uh, there was only comments about what it is. Um, and that's for me very surprising because for me, it's always like, what do things do? Yeah, it's, it's not <laughs> going into the detail, but yeah, what do you make out of it? And, Maybe there's also something through collaboration that, that could be uh, explored, I guess is the right word. And, and I think that's, that's why I would like to build some bridges between the arts and, uh, and the engineering community. And I'm always up for that, to have people come in. In the beginning, I think it will not be easy, right? Uh, conflicts or uh, people don't like what you're saying or what you're doing and how you're doing things. But I think over, the, over time, and I have experienced that in, in other projects, for example, with dance, things kind of normalize and kind of go into new directions. And that, that's where things become quite, quite interesting and, and exciting. It takes time, but uh, I'm very open to have discussions of working with engineers and bringing them in. Uh, or I'm going out and kind of joining you on, on whatever journey there is. 
That's about it. And it's 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that's that's about it. What I wanted to talk about and tell you guys. Questions? I don't know. Is the questions now or questions later? Um, usually we don't have questions. Now so everyone is speechless. Early, but uh, I guess uh, for the host. <laughs> no, no. It's a, it, it, I, I mean it's fine, but. Maybe one question for yes. Andreas, just one. Yes, please. Uh, was that the only like uh, circuitry there is in the world? Uh, no, there, there's a, a lot more. Yeah. Because I'm wondering how, how it controlling those lights in the 3D days. So, um, is it is only uh, using like that's four, four inputs? So. Maybe I can make this work later. I mean, I can make it work now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have five more minutes for the demo time. Oh. All right, so while uh, Andreas is setting up, anybody has any complimentary competitions to announce? Like there's a hardware hackathon happening or any hardware competitions happening? All right, uh, so anybody wants to hire hardware or electrical engineers, electronics engineers, artists? Nobody wants to hire? Okay, anybody is looking for a job? I'm yes. looking for a full stack. Okay, what are you looking for? Full stack engineer. You want a job? No, no, I'm looking for a Oh, he is looking for What is a full stack engineer? I already know Software that. engineering. Okay. Just talking about web. You're talking about web, right? Yes. Right. Um, why, why, why okay, sure. If there are web developers here, talk to Mihai, you want. You want to look for a job or are you hiring? I'm looking for a job. Okay, what's your skill set? FPGA. No. <laughs> <laughs> Science. Programming. Science, programming. So, if you are looking for a brilliant yeah, people, uh, uh, talk to Michal. Yeah. I mean, it's blinking, so. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> Absolutely. Huh? Sorry? The demo works. <laughs> well, it, it does, right? And it works without a PCB. Uh, with it's fine. <laughs> but again, I need. It would be great to have a PCB. <laughs> 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 yes, no breadboard shaming. I love breadboard. Really, I do. <laughs> uh, that's my material. Yes. Yeah. 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 To this one, 16. Just wow. So they run off. It's, it's a one ampere LED and uh, 12, 12 volt. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so hopefully we got a different.